Okay, so I was going to record this on a nice big digital SLR camera, but the battery's dead. So, doing this on my phone, stacked up on a pile of boxes, got the models. Let's do this in 10 minutes or less. And the lighting is a bit crap. So, let's talk about the peritoneum and the peritoneal cavity. Got two models because I'm not entirely sure which one's going to be best yet. I haven't entirely thought this through but I've got a rubber hose pipe and a bit of cling film um, and that's the important stuff. So peritoneum, this is about the connective tissues within the abdomen holding the GI tract in place and forming some of the spaces, the sacs, that the organs within the GI tract are within, which we don't see on this model, they've been taken away. It's important because it means the abdomen uh, is a self-contained space. The peritoneal cavity is a cavity within a bag. That's what keeps it separate from the pelvis. Can you hear the kids screaming? There's a crash right idea. I think it's playtime. So obviously the thorax is separated from the abdomen by the diaphragm, but the abdomen kind of extends down into the pelvis. So what keeps the stuff in the pelvis separate from the abdomen? Peritoneal cavity. Right, okay. So if we start with the basics, here is our gut tube, right? So think of the embryo, and in the embryo we have a simple gut tube running the length within the early abdominothoracic cavity and the cling film so if if we have this 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 space within the abdomen within the embryo and the the tube of the early GI tract is running through it and it's within a space within a space there's space around it but it's anchored to the posterior abdominal wall the, the dorsal part of the embryo by a sheet of connective tissue and when when that tube so when that tube lifts from the posterior abdominal wall and is imagine floating around within the cavity it, it pulls that connective tissue away from the wall and we have that connected tissue still lining the cavity but now the, the tube of the GI tract is anchored to the dorsal wall to the posterior abdominal wall by two layers of this sheet of connective tissue now this is a mesentery so this is the, the dorsal mesentery holding the GI tract in place and what happens is that as the GI tract, the, this simple tube becomes longer, more complicated and folds and bulges out to form the stomach and yada yada yada, the mesentery gets taken with it. So what we see here, uh, behind that is, is the mesentery is holding that. In the adult then we have a complicated GI tract but the mesentery anchors all of it to the posterior abdominal wall um, on a little section diagonally. This means that if anything wants to get to the GI tract blood vessels, nerves, or from the GI tract, blood vessels, nerves, then they must pass within the mesentery. So the mesentery is very important. And the mesentery allows the GI tract to move around. So when you're eating foods and it's, it's all, the smooth muscles all squeezing food along with peristalsis, it's free to move around. All of this is mobile within the abdomen. So that's what forms a mesentery. That's what a mesentery is. So just like when we looked inside the thorax and we see the thoracic cage is lined with parietal pleura and the lungs are covered with visceral pleura and those two things work together. When we look inside the abdomen, the abdominal cavity is lined with parietal peritoneum. And then that peritoneum where it's covering viscera, we call it visceral peritoneum. And the, these sheets here would be mesentery. Okay, so that's peritoneum. Parietal peritoneum, visceral peritoneum. Now, moving on. Well, let's carefully disembowel this guy. Guy, lady, whatever. Hmm. 
So this one's a bit more complete. But this one's less likely to fall apart. So I put the diaphragm back on. Okay, so in here, this is the abdominal cavity, right? Now, there's the pelvic stuff in there. Now, if this is the peritoneum, this is the parietal peritoneum lining the peritoneal cavity. So, it goes in here, like this. It's covering all of these things. Something like that. So, what you can see here is that the kidneys, the inferior vena cava, the uh, abdominal aorta, the renal vessels, the ureters, the common iliac arteries, all these muscles of the posterior abdominal wall are posterior to the peritoneum. So we say that they are retroperitoneal. And the GI tract, the GI tract is inside the peritoneum, right? The stuff in the pelvis then is covered by peritoneum, so the parietal peritoneum is separating the abdomen from the pelvis. It's like um, it's kind of like um, the top of a pie, right? The pastry on top of a pie is laid over. In this case, we've got a bladder. There's the rectum and stuff in there. So, so the parietal peritoneum separates the stuff in the pelvis, the pelvic viscera, from the abdominal stuff. Now, if we put this stuff back, and we cover this up, right? Can you see how all of that stuff is within the bag of cling film? So. If the cling film there is the parietal peritoneum, everything inside this bag of cling film is, the, in, the par, is in the peritoneal cavity. I could pull this bag out and we'd have a whole load of things in there. Now, this is not an entirely accurate model. Um, the ascending colon and the descending colon are parts of the GI tract that we call uh, secondarily retroperitoneal. That is, um, they were originally free floating around bits of GI tract tube, but then they become, they move to one side and the other side of the abdomen and they become fixed in place and they become overlain with peritoneum. So they're also now, for all intents and purposes, retroperitoneal but they've become secondarily retroperitoneal. So bear that in mind. I can't take them apart, so I can't change my cling film rolling. But all of this stuff is inside the peritoneal cavity. Now, the peritoneal cavity is further broken down into a greater sac and a lesser sac. Those are the two spaces. You can imagine the greater sac is the bigger space and the lesser sac is a smaller space. Now, most of what we can see here is in the greater sac. So the small bowel, um, the transverse colon, which has a meso that has a mesentery as well, by the way, the transverse mesocolon, and the stomach and the liver, these are all within the greater sac. Um, so now we need to consider something else. Um, I need more cling film. If I take a liver and a stomach, The stomach is part of the GI tract, so that's within the mesentery, right? So that formed within the mesentery. So that would be like this, we've got the mesentery there and here's the posterior abdominal wall. However, the liver, at this level in the embryo, there is, when these two things are forming, the stomach forms here and then a mass of cells forms the liver in a ventral mesentery. So a mesentery 
between the GI tract and the anterior abdominal wall. That's what the liver is going to become. We see the pancreas forming in there and the gallbladder and other bits and bobs. So what that means is, is that the liver is also covered in mesentery. I never have enough cling film for this bit. So the liver is also, it's like this, right? Oh, blimey. So in the embryo, if we've got the posterior abdominal wall back here, so this is the dorsal part, here's ventral. We've got the stomach, we've got, so we've got, ooh, don't fall out. We've got mesentery, posterior abdominal wall, we've got stomach, we've got more mesentery, we've got liver, and truth be told, we've got a bit more mesentery, and then we've got the anterior abdominal wall. Think falciform ligament and stuff like that. But what that means is that there's a mesentery between the stomach and the liver. Now, when everything moves around and rotates in the embryo, and in the adult, the liver is brought to, the, to lie over the stomach, right, as we see here, it means that between the stomach and the liver, okay, the stomach's actually upside down there, so as to confuse you all just a little bit less. Is that the, yeah, all right. So if you pull the stomach and the liver apart, you see a mesentery. That mesentery between the stomach and the liver is the lesser omentum. It's important because in its free edge you find the portal, the portal vein, a few other bits and bobs. But also it means that in here, or rather in here, if you pull apart the liver and the stomach, then behind that connected tissue, and you can you can get your fingers through a gap called the epiploic foramen. In the space behind that lesser omentum is the lesser sac. So it's a small space, kind of a potential space again. But the lesser omentum between the liver and the stomach, posterior to that, is the lesser sac. So all of this stuff out here is in the greater sac. The lesser sac is, is back there. And the lesser sac and the greater sac together are within the peritoneal cavity. If there's a lesser omentum, there must be a greater omentum. It's not on this model, but this one here's the greater omentum. Uh, it only shows half on this model, but it covers the whole the whole sides here. Now the the greater omentum actually grows from the greater curvature of the stomach. So if the lesser curvature of the stomach connects to the liver, so this is the anterior uh, ventral mesentery, then the dorsal mesentery would connect the greater curvature of the stomach back to the posterior abdominal wall, right? And it does. But before it does that, it grows and it grows to form another double sheet. Right, so again, this is, this is two layers. You see I've got two layers there? This is two layers of peritoneum folding down. So it, it starts from the stomach, folds down, and then folds back up again and goes to the posterior abdominal wall behind it. And that's the greater omentum. So the greater omentum here is it's fatty, it's peritoneum, it, it's, it allows everything to move around underneath it, but it's known as the policeman of the abdomen. If part of the small bowel becomes inflamed, typically that part of the small bowel moves a bit less, it becomes a little bit less motile, whereas the rest of the bowel keeps moving, that peristalsis keeps happening, pushing stuff through it. And what seems to happen is that the greater omentum then wraps itself around that inflamed area because everything else pushes it into place. And it helps limit the spread of that inflammation through the small bowel in the abdomen. So that's the greater omentum. Greater omentum here, lesser omentum between the stomach and the liver. Okay, so we've covered peritoneum, parietal peritoneum, visceral peritoneum, mesenteries, Greater omentum, lesser omentum, greater sac, lesser sac. How's that? Right, I've got to try not to break anything. Right?